January. January has Janu January has arrived. New Year, same me, and same incredible recipes. And today we are going to be making three spectacular ones. On the menu today, a one pot Thai inspired red curry. We have chickpea fritters and also pasta arrabbiata. Beautiful. These recipes are simple, perfect for evening family meals, and I've teamed up with Mr. Organic to bring you the recipes. I'm gonna be using their beautiful chopped tomatoes, sun ripened on their own farms in Italy, their incredible flavor packed chickpeas, all organic, and this ingenious, I think, red lentil rice. You can use this as replacement to any rice. And I'm gonna use it in the curry today. That's actually, and it gets really creamy. It's protein packed, but I'll tell you more about Mr. Organic further on in this video. So let's get into the first recipe, that Thai curry. Into my blender, I'm gonna be adding some red chilies, garlic, ginger, tomato puree, an onion, lemongrass paste, dried cumin and dried coriander, plus a little bit of sweetness. I'm using some brown sugar and a little bit of lime. Help the paste blend, add a little bit of oil. So we've made our paste now. This paste can actually be stored in a sealed uh, container in the fridge for up to a week. So you need half of it to make this recipe. The other half can be kept until you want to make this again. And you will want to make this again, I promise. So I'm going to preheat my saucepan over a medium heat, add a little bit of oil, followed by half of the paste and get that sauteing off. Whilst my paste is releasing all that beautiful aromatic flavour, stick it's sticking in my eyes. I'm gonna peel up some sweet potatoes, get them chopped into nice cubes. Also some yellow pepper and some spring onions. Before adding the sweet potato, pepper and spring onions, add a generous pinch of salt. That's gonna really bring out the flavours in that paste. So let's get this veg in. Smells so good. So just coat everything in that lovely paste. And then I'm gonna deglaze the pan with some coconut milk from a can and also some vegetable stock. So just a splash of soy sauce as well. And now I'm gonna add this red lentil rice. So actually, I was a bit skeptical when I first saw this product. Then I started using it and I'm sold completely. 26 grams of protein per 100 grams. So for someone like me that likes to work out, train more or less every day, this is the perfect thing for me. And uh, it tastes so good. It's got this nutty richness to it. And in the curry, as I said, it goes quite creamy and it thickens up the curry beautifully. So I'm gonna add a four pack of the Mr. Organic, organic red lentil rice now. So just let the curry bubble away for about 10 to 12 minutes. During that time, I'm gonna prepare some extra firm tofu, some broccoli and some sugar snap peas to go into the curry, but I'll add those items after the 10 minutes of this curry bubbling away. And I'm gonna finally chop some Thai basil. So part of the reason I love this lentil rice is the fact that it absorbs loads of flavor. So you'll notice that it will take in a lot of liquid. So if it hasn't cooked before, it's absorbed the majority of liquid, just add a little bit more vegetable stock. All right, so it's nearly there now, so I'm gonna add my tofu, broccoli, and sugar snap peas, and the Thai basil. Yes. I'm gonna serve some roasted peanuts on top of my curry, as well as some chopped spring onion. So let's serve this beautiful one pot curry up.
And there is my incredible Thai inspired one pot aromatic curry using the Mr. Organic red lentil rice. This so simple to make and it's gonna be beautiful, I promise. Smells so aromatic. Beautiful, so creamy. And that's not only because of the coconut milk, that's because of that lentil rice has made this go really nice and creamy too. Really big fan of that. Mmm, oh, stunning. So simple, so quick to make. There's my Thai inspired curry. The next dish I'm gonna be making is the pasta arrabbiata. Very simple, beautiful spicy tomato pasta and I'm using Italian tomatoes from Mr. Organic. So it's gonna be tangy and rich and beautiful, I just know. So let's get that cooking. Ar how do you say it again? Arrabbiata. So my arrabbiata. No, that's too Italian. So my arrabbiata. So my arrabbiata pasta. I rolled them then, didn't I? I'm gonna be doing this slightly different to the traditional sort of recipes. First thing I'm gonna do is halve some cherry tomatoes and chop up a red pepper and get those onto a lime baking tray and under my grill with a little bit of olive oil drizzled over the top. Because I really like grilling them before they go into the sauce because they just release their sweetness a bit more. Next to a large saucepan placed over a medium heat, I'm gonna add a touch of oil followed by some chopped onion, two red chilies chopped, and some minced garlic. So as you know, I always talk about in my videos, it's really important to season at every stage. So I'm gonna add a pinch of salt and pepper this arrabbiata is on the spicy side, okay? I've added two chilies. I even left the seeds in one of them. So if you don't like spice, leave one of them out and uh, don't add too much black pepper if you don't like too much spice. Okay, so this lovely base is smelling beautiful. The onions have just caramelized. It's now time to turn down the heat a little bit and add two tins of the beautiful Miss Organic Italian chopped tomatoes. I've been using these for a while. There's a difference in quality there. You can taste it right away. They're bursting with fresh flavor and they're from Miss Organic's own farm in Italy in Pontinia. I'd love to visit there one day when they're harvesting these tomatoes for sure. So I'm gonna get two tins into the saucepan and you just wanna swill out these with a little bit of water so you get any excess out as well. Just to bring out a little bit more sweetness and that acidity, I'm gonna add a little bit of caster sugar and some white wine vinegar. Then I'm gonna let the sauce bubble away for about 12 to 15 minutes. And during that time, I'm gonna cook off my pasta. And you can actually get organic pasta from this organic, so I'm using their penne pasta in this dish. So my sauce has thickened up beautifully. The pasta's almost there. I'm gonna throw in some chopped basil into this lovely sauce and my grilled tomatoes and peppers and then start stirring in the pasta. Always add your pasta to sauce and not sauce to pasta. Because you may find out that you haven't got enough sauce for the pasta. And you're then just gonna have loads of pasta, not enough sauce. So let's mix this in now. Look how beautiful that looks. Look at those colors. And I'm gonna plate this up. Spliss some more. So let's give this arrabbiata a taste. That is good. Little kick, nice sweetness. Those tomatoes are perfect. Mm. And I forgot to mention that this recipe is actually from my new cookbook, Plants Only Kitchen, and it's full of simple recipes like this. Many of them are actually protein packed, so don't forget to get that. And don't forget to use good quality Mr. Organic chopped tomatoes for this recipe, because it makes or breaks the dish. This is beautiful. So the third and final recipe is 
Some chickpea fritters. Miss Organic asked me to make a recipe using their amazing chickpeas and I could have done, you know, the traditional things. Chickpea curry, I've got a great recipe for that on my YouTube channel already. Hummus, falafel. Chickpeas are the most versatile and my favorite vegan ingredient ever, I must say. But I wanted to do something different. I wanted to have a play around. So I just got some of my favorite ingredients into a mixing bowl and made some chickpea fritters. They work so well, especially with the great quality chickpeas that you get from Miss Organic. So first up, into my mixing bowl, I'm gonna add one can of the Miss Organic chickpeas, just drained and patted dry. A handful of chopped fresh parsley zest and juice of a lemon, and a cup full of cooked spinach that I've just lightly chopped. There's a great mixture of flavors there, but I wanna add some heat, so I'm gonna add a chopped chili. I'm also gonna add some capers, which are one of my favorite ingredients. Those little pearls of salty, beautiful umami goodness. And also, I'm gonna add some tahini. Okay, so look at this lovely mixture. What I need to do now is sort of crush it with the spoon or a fork or an old-fashioned masher. Just so you break up some of the chickpeas, I'm just using the spoon here break them up slightly or crush them essentially. You can do all this in a blender, but I wanted to create a recipe that, you know, student friendly, you don't need a lot of equipment. All you're gonna need for this dish is a bowl, a spoon, and a, a frying pan. Once you've crushed up your chickpeas, add a pinch of sea salt, followed by some chia seeds, self-raising flour, and some baking powder. Should have got a bigger bowl. I'm also gonna add some non-dairy milk now. Oh, he didn't add That's the baking powder. Damn, forgot it, nearly forgot it. So all right, we can get that in now. This just helps rise the mixture a little bit more. Even though you've got self raising flour in there, this just helps get them even more fluffy. Gosh, lucky I remember that, innit guys? So there's my chickpea fritter batter done. But you can get quite creative with the flavorings. Just if you prefer, if you don't like capers maybe, swap them out. Or if you like, maybe you can make a chipotle flavor version. Um, yeah, this is quite, what's the word I'm looking for? Versatile. Versatile, thank you, Ollie. Now I'm gonna preheat a non-stick frying pan over a medium to low heat, add a touch of oil, and then we're gonna get frying these in two tablespoon dollops. Whilst they're frying, I'm gonna to top them with a few rings of leek, just to add something different, another bit of texture, another bit of flavor, and when you flip them over, that leek goes lovely and golden and crisp. And as you can see, they're rising up already. They're getting fluffy. These are so beautiful. They're crisp on the outside, fluffy in, on the center, and really quite substantial as well. Just one tin of chickpeas will probably make about 12 of this size, so that's enough to feed a family of four. They're really, really substantial, I promise you. Just before I get these out, I just wanna show you what happens when you add the leek to the top. Look at this. Ah, oh, yes. Look at the rings, beautifully in golden. Right, I'm gonna serve these up now. The rest of the mix can be stored in a fridge uh, for up to two days, so you can help yourself to more of these freshly fried as well. I'm simply gonna serve mine with some hummus, hot sauce, chopped herbs, spring onion, and tomato. Mmm. -hmm. Oh, wow. They are so good, so fresh, vibrant. I love the lemon that comes through and the caramelized leek on top. The chickpeas have still got a beautiful crunch. I think that's credit to how Mr. Organic prepares their chickpeas. Don't forget to check out Mr. Organic. I'll pop all the links uh, for them below this video because they do so many products. So many, in fact, actually. My cupboard is stocked up. Their tomato ketchup is one of the best ketchup shop bought I've ever had. So thank you so much to them for supporting the video. It means the world. I've got so many incredible 
uh, ideas coming up for my channel in 2021. We started off in December with the live, the first ever live plants only kitchen music session. Stay tuned for more of them and just so many big announcements. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks again to Miss Organic. I'll see you soon. Ka 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 kaboom.